Unfortunately, this video title is not clickbait. We have a real problem. And uh, the only remedy is to pull out this custom built Dana 60 and put in something else. If you've been watching my one ton axle swap series, you know I have a lot of time invested into the drivetrain. So when I realized this front axle wasn't gonna work, you could say it was a little bit of a bummer. I knew from the beginning that using this axle in this project specifically was gonna be kind of a gamble, but I was confident that I could make it work without having to do custom shafts, and that was the goal. The goal was that I just cut from, uh, basically turn it from a driver's side drop axle to a passenger side drop axle by just cutting the tubes and swapping them. Super simple, makes it to where I can use OEM axle shafts, it's just now the driver's side is on the passenger and vice versa, but unfortunately that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. The problem I'm having is twofold. We have the most offset of any Dana 60s in these Ford Super Duty axles. Again, I, I would have chose a different axle if I was just starting from scratch, but I already had a Dana 60 in the shop, so I wanted to use it. I shouldn't have done that, <laughs> hindsight's 2020. You couple that with the narrowest frame rails I've ever worked on for any chassis I've ever touched and this Land Rover Discovery, and that is like 28 inches or so, frame rail to frame rail, it's just crazy narrow, and it makes it to where we have extreme binding on these joints. So the rear axle, not that bad. First off, the shaft is longer, making it to where it softens the angles on these joints. So the rear axle, I don't think is gonna be a problem at all. The front axle is usable at ride height, and if I flex down a little bit, it's still usable, but I only get like two or so inches of down travel on this, uh, on this center section before it starts to bind this upper joint. This Discovery CV joint is very small and it binds super early. So we've got a bunch of different problems working against us and the only way to fix this and do it right is to do a custom front axle. Most of us that build 4x4s out of junkyard parts don't look at custom housings as being much of an option. But I challenge you to compare prices these days. Things have changed a lot, and locally I can no longer find a Super Duty Dana 60 for less than like a thousand bucks. Most of the time it seems like it's around 1200 bucks plus. As you've seen in this series, these axles typically need to be heavily modified in order to fit whatever project it is that you're working on. And we still run the risk of getting a bent housing from the junkyard or making a mistake while modding it like I did here, and you end up having to scrap everything and start over. At 1895 bucks, I can get a brand new custom housing built with the exact pinion angle, pinion offset, and caster angle to fit my needs. Plus these housings have a higher ground clearance than anything you can find at a junkyard, and they come with a heavy duty diff cover. This will give us a front axle that is custom tailored for this project and make for a really easy install. But of course, before we get to that point, we need to accurately communicate these dimensions to the manufacturer of this new housing. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now. We're gonna pull some measurements. I'm gonna show you how I go about doing this. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way, but either way, we're gonna get some very precise, some very accurate measurements for our custom axle builder, and then we can order it and we can patiently wait for it to show up and we can continue on this project. The first thing I need to do is find the center line of the vehicle. And this is something that as I'm building on most of my vehicles, I mark with a white paint pen so I could reference it later. And right now is a perfect example as to why I would need that. If this is something you haven't done before, just take a full width measurement of your frame and then find a cross member or something that you can mark a center line with a paint pen to make it easy for a reference point later. Now we need to make a mark from the center line of the chassis down onto the floor. One for the front of the vehicle and one for the back. Now we're ready to mark a vehicle center line from the nose to the tail of this Land Rover Discovery, and we're gonna use this as a reference point to measure our pinion offset. You can definitely use a plumb bob for stuff like this, but I prefer to use a dot laser. I'm gonna strike that dot laser across the center line of the output of our transfer case, make a mark on the floor. Now I can take a measurement from that mark to the center line of our chassis, and that is a perfect representation of the pinion offset that we can now relay to our axle manufacturer. You don't have to draw stuff like this whenever you're ordering custom parts, but I prefer to do it simply because I wanna make sure everyone is speaking the same page. I did the exact same thing when I ordered drive shafts. It's a whole bunch of different yokes and flanges and all this, and I wanted to confirm that everyone's on the same page because just something as simple as a small difference in uh, the language you're using to describe something can change what it is that you get. And first thing that sticks out to me is this passenger side drop um, axle and passenger side changes depending on what country it is that you live in because the passenger seating position will change. So I'm gonna make it very clear that this is for a 2003 Land Rover Discovery here in the United States, but if you're working on something custom that you imported, 
and you say pesticide drop, that's gonna mean something completely different here. Because these guys are uh, making these in America. So anyway, this is a Fusion 4x4 60, not a Dana 60. Dana is not building it, Fusion 4x4 is, but it's gonna use all the Dana 60 parts um, in terms of outers and the, uh, the different like gears and lockers and all that. So the first measurement we're giving them is a wheel mount surface to wheel mount surface measurement, 69 and a quarter. And that is basically exactly what we have now because I like the width of this, of this axle. It's much wider than the factory Landover axle. And I think it sits in there perfect. So I'm not gonna mess with that at all. Um, but if we wanted to, we could go wider, we go narrower. However, I mean, we're ordering a custom axle, so it's pretty sweet. You can change all those dimensions as you go along. Now, I wanna be super clear as to how I got our pinion center because I bet 99% of you guys follow exactly why I measured it the way I did, but there's some of you that might not be familiar as to why I did it that way. The center line of this axle will marry perfectly with the center line of our chassis, and because of that, it makes it to where we can use the center line of our chassis as our measurement as if we were measuring off of the center of the axle. So if we measure from the center of the chassis to the center of the output on the transfer case, that measurement is six and an eighth of an inch. It's Super, super small, it's crazy. So anyway, <clears throat> that's how I got that measurement. That is why I did it in that way. The next measurement we need to give them is caster. I like to go between six and eight degrees, so I figured I'd ask for six. I've, I've, I've put many vehicles at six degrees caster and I've never had an issue with death wobble or anything like that. Our pinion angle is pretty steep. I'm asking for 14 degrees for a couple of different reasons. The way I have the front suspension set up like this, as it goes through the suspension travel, the pinion is not gonna rotate. So because it's not gonna rotate, I wanna make sure that it's at least starting where the center of our pinion is pointed directly at our transfer case. So this is gonna change wildly from vehicle to vehicle. I basically just got under there with an angle finder and I started moving things around until it looked like the pinion was gonna face directly at our transfer case and that's where I wanna keep it. Uh, I don't wanna go any higher because when we go, come up, we don't wanna hit anything and you don't go any lower because we don't have any binding. So it's just kind of a fine balance. That is the number that I chose here. Also, something else I wanna clarify with these guys is that I have to have inner C's that will work with the outers for a 2004 Super Duty 60. So they're gonna locate a set of inner C's for me. This is not something they normally do, but they're calling around. They're gonna find some uh, 2004 Super Duty inner C's. They're gonna machine them to fit their housing. And that way, when they ship this thing out to us, this custom axle, we can bolt our outers right on there and it's gonna, it's gonna save a ton of headache and a ton of money, in fact, for us um, because we don't have to do new brakes and have to refigure out our ABS, our wheel speed sensors and all that other stuff. So I think this is pretty much all you need to send them. But if you contact them, like if you were gonna order your own custom axle, they'll just give you a list of the stuff that they need in order to build what it is that you want. And you can go from there. As we're wrapping up today's video, I think that this is a perfect time to talk about uh, something that I just had a conversation with uh, one of my sponsors about, and that is, what and who this channel is for. I spend a lot of time experimenting, I've always done that, and sometimes I take really big gambles and really big risks, and I think this is a perfect time to communicate that uh, even though I make some of this stuff look easy, it's not. A, a lot of this is, a lot of the gambles that I take are based on years of fabrication experience and uh, a lot of information, a lot of failures, a lot of successes, and so even though a lot of times you guys might think that this looks easy, and I get comments like that every video, you make it look so easy. Uh, a lot of times it's not. It's not the same, it's not as easy for you as it was for me because of all the years of experience that I have uh, backing me up. I think that today's video is a perfect example of uh, the fact that if you try to build things like this yourself, you need to be prepared that it might not work out and it might be a uh, giant net negative, you know, you might not be able to recoup the cost that it took for you to build your own axle the way that I did and, um, and have it not work for you. So I'm very fortunate, right? I build so many things that this axle that we used in this video, or sorry, in this series that we are now pulling out is just going to get reused in another build. I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to pull the, uh, the locker or anything out of it. I'm just sometime down the road when I do a straight axle swap or something like that, I will definitely be reusing this housing, but not everyone has that luxury. So when you're watching me take these big risks and you're watching me build things successfully, keep in mind that it's not always as easy as it seems on the internet. <laughs> and I think that, um, 
I'm really glad to be partnered up with Fusion 4x4, and this isn't just a giant plug for them. I genuinely, I've looked around at a bunch of different axle manufacturers, and I think that their price point is so spot on with how competitive today's market is for used parts that uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for a lot of you guys watching this series to just buy a housing that you know is going to work and that it has a warranty and everything else. So for the rest of you that are like, they're experimenters like me, continue to buy weird stuff from the junkyard and see what you can marry it to, but just understand that it's not quite as simple as it looks on this channel. Sometimes you, you really, I mean, this was the amount of work that I have into that front end to have to pull it out. It's a huge failure that sucks, right? So if you're not prepared for that level of failure, like I am, uh, I would, I would be a little bit more reserved and a little bit more conservative about how you spend your money on this stuff. Anyway, Lecture is over. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Lots of how-to content this year is going to be full of adventure videos. You're, you're going to see me take a lot of these projects out and use the crap out of them this year. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you stick around. If you want to help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gators, all the normal stuff I talk about at the end of every video. And if uh, we also have a link to our Patreon account there as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Nate. We'll see you next time.